In this short video, we're going to review log functions, their graphs, and their properties. So let's examine what we mean by the inverse of an exponential function. Because we know that the exponential function is one to one. So it has an inverse. But there's no algebraic way we can solve. If I switch the roles of x, if I want to solve for x in this equation, there's no algebraic operation which will allow me to do that. Still, even though I don't have a formula for the inverse of this exponential function, I still know, I know a lot of its properties. Because I know the properties of the exponential function, that tells me that I should know the corresponding property of its inverse. For example, I know that the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. So that means that the range of its inverse must be all real numbers. And since the range is all positive numbers for an exponential function, that would tell me that the domain for its inverse must be all positive numbers. We know that an exponential function has only one y-intercept, no x-intercepts, because b to the 0 equals 1. So that means its inverse must have no y-intercepts, but it will have an x-intercept. And of course, I have to exchange the coordinates. It'll be at 1, 0. So whenever the input to the inverse function is 1, the output will be 0. Uh, the exponential function has no vertical asymptote, so its inverse has no horizontal asymptote. On the other hand, exponential functions have a horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. That means that its inverse must have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And remember that if you have a base which is larger than 1, then y tends to go to 0, gets arbitrarily close to 0 from the right, meaning from the positive numbers, as x goes to negative infinity. So for the inverse, that says that y would go to negative infinity as x approaches 0 from the right. And we can make a similar statement if the base is between 0 and 1. In fact, we've already sketched the inverse function for y equals 2 to the x in a previous video. So if this, this we know is y to the 2 to the x, the yellow graph represents y equals 2 to the x. The red graph then represents its inverse. And we can see its domain. The domain for the inverse is all positive number. Its range is all real numbers. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and its intercept is 1, 0. So this inverse function is a whole new function, and we call it a logarithmic function, or simply a log function. And we can write it as log, so spelling out the word L-O-G, with a subscript B, and then parentheses X. I prefer to have the parentheses here, but you can write it without the parentheses as well. So the B tells me that it comes from the exponential function with base B. And so I have these equivalent forms, the log form and the exponential form. So notice that the base needs to be the same in each case, and that the output from the log is the input to the exponential, because these two functions are inverses of each other. And the input to the log is going to be the output from the exponential.
Now, if I want to know the property of logs, meaning the property of log functions, all I need to do is look at the properties of the exponential functions. And there should be a corresponding property of logs. Of course, the difference is that whatever I'm dealing with outputs in the exponentials, those will be inputs to the log. And whenever I'm dealing with an output to the exponential, that'll be an input to the log. Or maybe I just said that. Whenever I'm saying the input to the exponentials, that'll be the output to the logs. So for example, we have the well-known property that if I multiply the two outputs from an exponential function, that's the same as adding the inputs. So multiplying two powers with the same base, is the same as adding the exponents and keeping that same base. So now if I exchange the role of inputs and outputs, that means I get the log property where if I multiply the inputs, that's the same as adding the outputs. So our quotient property for exponents or dividing the outputs is the same as subtracting the inputs. That should tell me for logs that dividing the inputs would be the same as subtracting the outputs. And if I, over here, I have the property that if I take an output and raise it to the power, I get the same thing as multiplying the input by that power. For the logs, if I take an input and raise it to a power, that's the same as multiplying the output by that power. When the input is 0 to an exponential, the output is 1. So when the input is 1 to a log function, the output is 0. Changing the sign to the input of an exponential function results in taking the reciprocal of the output, whereas Taking the reciprocal of the input to the log results in changing the sign of the output. When the input is 1, the output is the base. And so when the input is the base, the output is 1. Really, that's a special case of the fact that the exponential and the logs are inverses of each other. So if you start with x, take the log of it, exponentiate it, you'll get x back again. And the same idea, if you start with x, you exponentiate it, then take the log. You did something, you undid it, you get x back again. These two functions are inverses of each other. Two special bases. We already talked about e as a special base for an exponential function. We call this the natural exponential function. So its inverse, which is log base e, is called the natural log function. This is such an important function that it has a special name. Instead of calling it just log base e, we call it ln. And so please note that that's a lowercase l. It is not an uppercase i. Just drives me crazy. It's a lowercase l. L. If we look here, we've got n for natural, l for log. Nowhere in natural log do we have an uppercase i. And then if we take log base 10, we call that the common log. And so we actually can leave off the uh, subscript 10. We just write log of x that is understood to be log base 10. And these are the buttons that will be on a scientific calculator. You can calculate them uh, using your calculator, either the natural log or the common log of a number, and you'll get a decimal approximation for most numbers. Sometimes it's, it's actually an exact value. 
So for example, here, let's not use a calculator, but let's just go ahead and uh, use the properties of logs to evaluate log base two of eight. Most calculators don't have a log base two button. So we'll have to use the properties of logs. And so we can write this, what does this say? This says two raised to some power equals eight or two raised to what power equals eight. And that would be power of three because two cubed is eight, then log base two of eight equals three. All right, what about the natural log of radical E? Remember the natural log is log base E. And so uh, what am I doing? I'm taking one half, putting it as input to the exponential function, then taking that and putting it input into the log base E function. Those two operations should undo each other and I should just get one half back again. The other way I could think of this is I could bring the one half out in front and then log base E of E would be one. So I'd have one half times one giving me one half. The last example is log base radical two of one sixteenth. Well, this would say radical two raised to what power gives me one sixteenth. So to help us understand this, let's write everything as a power of two. Radical two is two to the one half power. One sixteenth is the same as, well, one over two to the power of four, which is two to the power of negative four. So if I multiply the one half times the y, that's telling me that half of y must equal negative four. So y is negative eight. Now suppose I don't know what the base b is, but I have an approximation for log base b of five, which would be 0 0.35 and log base b of two is about 0 0.15. And so what I'd like to do is find the approximate value of, well, log base b of five times radical b. You may say to yourself, well, how can I possibly figure this out? I don't know what b is. Well, let's see what the properties of logs tell us. Here I have a product as the input. I can write that as the sum as of the output, so log base b of five plus log base b of radical b. Now, radical b is the same as b to the one half power. So log base b of radical b would be one half. Log base b of five, I'm told, is approximately 0 0.35. And so adding those together, I get 0 0.85. In our next example, we have b cubed over 40 as input to log base b. So let's go ahead and use the properties of logs. I can write that as log base b of b cubed, subtract log base b of 40. Now we know how to handle log base b of b cubed. We saw an example over here where we had log base b of b to the one half. b cubed is going to be undone. The, cube, the exponentiation is undone by taking the log. But what about here? I have log base b of 40. I only know something about log base b of five and log base b of two. Well, I can write 40 as five times eight. And I have to be careful when I do all these operations because I put these brackets in to remind myself that whatever comes out from this, I have to subtract the whole thing. So I'm gonna keep that in brackets. Well, log base B of five times eight, I can write as the sum log base B of five plus log base B of 
8. So I have an approximation for log base b of 5. What about log base b of 8? Well, I can think of that as 2 to the power of 3. So I'll use the property of logs to bring the 3 in front of the log as a multiplier. And now I have approximations for both of these. So I can go ahead and replace log base b of 5 with 0 0.35, log base b of 2 with 0 0.15, and do the arithmetic. I don't really need a calculator for that. 3 times 0 0.15 will be 0 0.45. Add that to 0 0.35, I get 0 0.8. So 3 minus 0 0.8 is 2.2. So finally, our last property of logs is the change of base formula. Let's motivate this with an example. We'd like to find the value of log base 5 of 2 correct to four decimal places. Now, if this were a log base 10 or log base e, I could just use my calculator directly. But since this is log base 5, let's think about this. I can rewrite this in exponential form. That really says if y equals log base 5 of 2, then 5 raised to the power of y equals 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logs of both sides. When I say take the logs, that means I'm going to make each side be the input to a log function. And I'm going to use common logs because common log is on my calculator. I could have also used ln, so natural log, because that's on my calculator as well. Now I can use on the right hand side, excuse me, on the left hand side, I can use the property of logs and bring the y out in front as a multiplier and go ahead and solve for y. That'll be log base, log of 2 over log of 5. Now those are just numbers, so I can just divide them. I can take out my calculator and find a decimal approximation. And that's about 0 0.4307, correct to four decimal places. So now there's nothing special about log base 5 of 2. There's nothing special about the common log. So in general, if I have log base b of x, I can write that as log of x over log of b. And as a nice memory aid, I can see the subscript, which is already towards the bottom, goes into the bottom of this ratio. But I could have used natural log, so that would be natural log of x over natural log of the base. And in fact, I could have used any other different base which may or may not be convenient in a different context. So what this says is that the ratio of the input, ratio of the log of the input and the log of the base is constant for any base. And that's where this name logarithm comes from. It comes from a Latin uh, phrase or word meaning common ratio. So you have this common ratio. If you take any number and divide it by a base, then that is going to be, take the log of that number, the log of the base, the ratio is the same, no matter what base you choose for the log. In fact, you could even say that the original log base b of x, it really means log base b of x over log base b of b, which is 1. So that's our change of base formula.